Mr. First thing I'm going to do is make my plantain dough. Then I'll make the chai. I'm going using this cup actually because it's going to be in the shop. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to my live, guys. Welcome to Dinners from Around the World with me, Chef Walker Barrett. Today's dinner is inspired by Indian cooking. So, as usual, I'm inspired by another cultural cuisine and I try to fuse it with our Jamaican cuisine or whatever fresh seasonal ingredients that is available in the market so welcome 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 i want to share with you what i'm making for my family we're making a fish masala uh curry so it's going to have a bag of indian spices in it and i'm just going to show you how other cultures make their curries a little bit different from how we make curries here in jamaica also with our masala fish curry i'm going to be making some roti and this is where it gets interesting because sweet plantains or ripe plantains as we call it here in jamaica is in the market in abundance i can't help but to be inspired by ripe plantains yes i know we always have it in the market but guess what it just seemed like it extra enough right now and I'm going to be making a ripe plantain roti to go with our masala fish curry. And then I'll also make a little coconut basmati rice. And if that was not enough, hmm. Sadly tonight, we don't have any dessert. Guess what guys, I run out of eggs. I run out of eggs and the dessert that I wanted to make, I can't make it and I don't have anything else. But I'm going to show you how to make a jam using chia seed. So we're going to make a sorrel chia jam. And that jam is something that I make and we snack on it on toast or on pancake and, and whatever. So I'm just pleased to show you that. So if you are new to dinners from around the world with Chef Walker Barrett, welcome, 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 and welcome. Welcome to the community of foodies. Here is where I show you that you can make simple and delicious and different food at home using local seasonal ingredients with a few new spices uh, and make some fabulous food for your family. So if you're watching on Facebook, welcome. And if you are also watching on YouTube, welcome. And if you are watching on Instagram, welcome, welcome, welcome. Let me know where you're watching from so I can give you a shout out. So guys, Cheryl Jenkins says hi. Welcome Cheryl. With no further delay, I want to start with our plantain roti. So, in this container, I have one ripe plantain. All I did was to boil it, remove the seeds. Yes, plantain have seeds. You know, the seeds are usually in the center of the plantain. And I mash it with two tablespoons of butter. So, that is going to get into our bowl right now. I'm going to add some salt to taste. Diana says hi, Chef. Hey, Diana. So, ripe mashed plantain is Unique. in our container. Unique baby says hi. Hi. We're adding some salt. And I'm just going to add some flour. And this is regular all-purpose flour. So I'm starting with one cup of flour and I'm just going to combine everything together. And guess what today, guess what guys, tonight is the night we announce our sixth winner. 
in our Street Food Saturday 60 year anniversary promotion. So we are going to be announcing our final, final winner. So stay to the end of the live to hear who win, who is going to be our winner tonight. So we have been having a promotion uh, because this year, 2021, is when we celebrate six years of having Street Food Saturday's Riverside Picnic. And so... We have gone through five winners already, and tonight is when we are going to be announcing our final, final, final winner. All right, so stick around. So guys, now that I added the flour, we're just going to squeeze it so that it comes together. Look at that. This is what it's looking like, so I'm going to just put it out on the board so that you can see all the action let me just put this um dish to the side so so this is not totally gluten-free because the plant in itself will not form into a dough so i need a little gluten chef kim said just in time for dinner welcome chef kim so guys, for those who are just joining, welcome. Today's dinners from around the world is inspired by Indian cooking. And I'm going to be making a curry fish masala. And um, that will have quite a bit of Indian spices. And it's cooked a little bit different from how we make curry here in Jamaica. Also, what I'm making right now is our ripe plantain roti so this is one average ripe plantain all i did was to mash it i mean boil it mash it and add some flour and butter and salt to it so right now i'm just kneading it to develop the gluten just like so okay. hmm. yeah, flour is blocking. The okay we're gonna move it over so and then I'm going to divide this into about six or so the way can you grab that um, that platter for me please so we want a nice smooth dough and that's what that is any one of the platters oh. So now that our dough is ready guys, this is what we're going to do. I want to divide it into about, I don't know, four ounce balls. So I'm just winging it right now. Just round it like so. And we're just going to let it relax. Pat Paris, good evening sis. Hey Pat, good evening and welcome. So we're going to be getting six rotis all right so for those who are just joining we are making ripe plantain roti i'm just going to cover that um Ishile, could you just grab the plastic wrap we're going to cover that with some plastic while i wash my hands and clean up thank you so let's just do a little cleaning up quickly. Clean up, clean up, clean up. Okay guys, so now that that is done, I'm going to cover these because it's very important that they rest. And so while they're resting, I don't want them to dry out, so it's best to cover them. So I'm covering, put that away, I show you. Uh, take a look, one last look. This is our ripe planting roti dough. I am going to let them rest, and then we're gonna come back to them a little later on. So, 
So guys, resting the dough is very important. Uh, it helps to relax the gluten, and the gluten came from the flour that we added to our mashed ripe plantains. So just be mindful of that. Also, before I move on to anything else, we are going to season our fish. And this is what my fish is looking like. I am using some tilapia fillets for my fish curry. So um, I'm going to season it with some salt. And some of the obedient flavors that will be placed into our curry sauce. And those flavors are, so we're using some turmeric on our fish, uh, chili powder, garlic powder, and garam masala. So this is my version of garam masala that I made. I made these with a bunch of Indian spices like coriander, cumin, methi, um, a little bit of cinnamon is in there, some cloves in there. So I basically make my own garam masala. Uh, you can buy garam masala in the spice section of the supermarket or in the specialty Indian store. Hey, Auntie. Hey, guys. My bowl is a little bit small, but guess what? It has to work. So I'm just going to get my hand in there and get all of that spice on the fish. You know, tilapia is a freshwater fish. It's um, one of those fish that takes flavor well so I chose to use the tilapia this evening so very important that it is marinated early so that some flavors can get in there so now that this is marinating um, now that the dry rub is on which was our masala salt and pepper I am going to put it aside so take a look I'm gonna put this away to just chill out and then we come back to it later on. Just wash it up guys, you know all I have to wash as I go along. So, this is what we are going to do now. We are going to start cooking our sauce. Okay, so in this pot, we are going to be making our masala curry sauce, and it's a little process. We are going to be starting with browning up some onions first, and then, so let's just look at the ingredients. So I have some chopped onions, some chopped ginger, I have chili powder and turmeric, I have my garam masala, and I have some tomato puree that makes this sauce taste so delicious. So this is tomato and chili peppers pureed in some water in here. So those are our ingredients. So right about now, just gonna add some oil to the pot. So we're doing one tablespoon of oil and one tablespoon of butter. The butter adds a nice sort of flavor to this, so I want to add some butter in. Uh, this recipe also has a special little ingredient. This is tamarind, tamarind, um, tamarind juice, if you will. So what this was, this is fresh tamarind. I added some water to it and just make it into a paste. I love the flavor that the tamarind adds to this um, particular dish. It adds a little bit of tang, so that's what I like. So in here, this is one large onion chopped, and I'm going to be using most of it so i'm going to let the onions saute until they are brown in color so next time 
you see this onion it's going to be golden brown so I'm gonna move this pot out the, this stove out the way and I'm going to bring another stove up and we are now going to be making our chia sorrel jam so pot is on for our chia so chia seeds this is what it looks like so it's really this one is organic this one is not pectin it gels um, so it's a great alternative to pectin um, pectin is a carbohydrate compound that is found in the cell walls of fruits and um, in the skin and in the seeds and so you can either get the natural pectin from the fruit or you can buy commercial pectin but tonight I'm using something different this chia seed is something I, I like to use a lot because it is filled with iron and most of the time my iron runs low so anytime I want to perk the iron I put this in smoothies I put it in porridge I put it in juice and tonight I'm going to show you how you can use it as an alternative to pectin. So this is a seed of uh, actually a plant. This grows a lot in like the Mexican region. This one is organic and they come in both black and white seeds and this is a combination of both. So this is going to be my thickener. And so let's go. Hey, Miss T. Dubida, welcome back. So tonight we're inspired to make, uh, well, we're inspired by Indian cuisine and we are making uh, masala curry fish. And right now I'm about to make our jam and we're using a little special ingredients we're using chia seeds to thicken our jam so guys this is sorrel this is one pound of sorrel that i bought in the market all i did was to chop it in my food processor and then i put it in the freezer so it is partially still frozen um i took i took it out but Still a little frozen, but no worries. So that goes into the pot. Can you see that, Ophelia? Okay. Huh? Um, no? Why not? Okay, so we want to see in the pot. So the sorrel in the pot, this is what it looks like. And so I am now going to add some sugar. So I'm adding one cup to start with brown sugar. Sorrel is very sour. And I'm adding two cups of brown sugar. And then, you know, we can't make sorrel without ginger, right? So I'm adding one teaspoon of ginger powder plus two teaspoons of fresh chopped ginger. I love the vibe that the ginger brings. And so we're just gonna mix this around and just set it cook in its natural, natural juices. And so this will cook for about 10 minutes until the sorrel florets, until the sorrel florets are softened. So sorrel, is the hibiscus plant is a botanical flowers and you know in Jamaica we use it a lot to make sorrel drink I use it a lot to make smoothies and stuff like what I'm doing now so I'm just gonna cover it but in the meantime let's look at what's going on in our pot for, for our curry sauce better one where is my spoon okay so let's give we want to brown up our onions if you look at it give them a close-up guys um, 
kindness as well have something to do with the thing that I'm doing today. Hey, you are known. Thanks for checking in. So, that is browning nicely. Hey sis, we have to be patient with our curry sauce. Remember I told you that I'm doing it, this is different from how we make curry in Jamaica. In Jamaica, we mostly just put the, the curry powder with other seasoning on the meat and then we just cook it like a stew. This one, I'm actually making the curry sauce first and this is the first step. This is onion and a little bit of light, um, this is onion sauteing in olive oil and butter and we want this onion to be nice and brown so therefore we want to let it go low and slow. Can you roll? Check it in from Kingstone. Hey, can you roll? Welcome. So now guys, don't go back yet. Let's see what's going on with our sorrel. So you probably could zoom. So this is what the sari looks like. We're adding no water to it because it has its natural liquid plus the sugar that we added melt. But it's very important to allow the um, sari to cook. And then we're going to add our chia seeds later on. And the chia seeds are going to thicken this up just like the pectin would. So we're going to cover it back. And tabus, um, little girl. Thank you. Okay, so I have to keep watching my stove because most times the gas finishes and I don't even realize. Onions are browning up nicely, so we're almost there. And for those who are just joining, our dough for the roti has been resting. So, let us recap guys. So tonight's dinner is inspired by the Indian cuisine. And so we are making a masala fish curry. We're using tilapia fillets as a fish. That was seasoned earlier. We season it with turmeric, uh, chili powder, and some salt and garlic, and that is resting. And in the pot to my right, we are making our masala curry sauce. And so right now we are browning up some onions, uh, in butter and oil and this is happening nice and slow that's what we want and then in this pot we're making our chia sorrel jam tonight so chia seeds are what we're adding to our sorrel jam and this is going to thicken it up so right now the jam is um, the sorrel flour it's for cooking in its natural juice with ginger and sugar so later on we will thicken it with our chia seeds so, close up on this, time for us now to start adding some good stuff to, look at this, now that this is nice and brown, we are going to be adding some stuff, whole teddy rolls come in a little bit. So in here we're adding one teaspoon of ginger. My stove down. You see how fast the onion, as soon as you turn away from it, it starts to brown. Now we're adding our turmeric and our garlic powder in. Let's get it all in. And then the garam masala. I'm adding two teaspoons of the garam masala. And just mix it in. It's very important to cook the spices to develop a nice flavor at the end. So we're gonna let this saute up for about a minute and then I'm going to be adding my tomato and pepper puree. This is what it looks like. So this is 
fresh tomatoes. This is roughly three tomatoes, one cup of water, and a red bell pepper. All I did was to just put it in the blender and puree. So this is gonna be our liquid. Back to the sorrel jam. This is happening nicely. I like to put a little bit of salt in my jam. Nisia says to my lecturer, Eddie Rose says, can you make a sorrel cobbler cake? <laughs> uh, when we make the jam, I'll use it to make a cake in the future, my darling. Trini says, good night, if you come in on the viewers. Good night, Trini. So, five more minutes on the jam and then we're going to be adding the chia seeds to thicken it up. So back to our masala. Now we are going to add... Hey Danielle. Now we're adding, we just added our tomato and pepper puree. Jesse Chambers, sorry jam. And we're gonna add some salt. Hello, JC Chambers, welcome. Okay, so some salt went in, and now we're just going to let this cook. We're going to actually let it cook until it is dry and start separating. That will make sure that all the spices are cooked out, and then we're going to add some more liquid and cook it. And it's gonna to come together nicely. So guys, do you have any questions? That was a good time. So take one last look at our curry sauce. Just gonna give it a taste. I'm gonna add some pepper to it later on. And we're just going to let this stay here and cook and just get nice and happy. Back to our jam. Let's turn it down. Okay. Now is the time. We are going to add some lime juice to our jam. Just to add some lime flavor. So the juice of half of a lime, look at that. And what the lime does, it helps to brighten the natural color. Come on guys, are you seeing the, are you Louis seeing Herman this? Jackson, Good night, Shepard family, I'm watching what to put in today. Hey mommy, we're cooking curry fish in short and we're going to make some roti right now we are getting our jam together okay so i think our florets they're almost there it's cooking it for two more minutes Two more minutes and then we're going to add our chia seeds and the chia seeds are going to thicken up oh but wait guys I forget an ingredient in our curry sauce I'm going to be adding some tamarind two three tablespoons of tamarind juice to our curry JC Chambers, it's Tasha Chambers, OMG, I love Roti. So our tamarind is in and the cooking continues on low. So in here now, we are going to be adding our chia seeds shortly. Let me just clear away some of the stuff that we're not using get my station nice and neat JC Chambers I try and blame you, you boy sorry it's boiling now um JC it's all I did was to chop it <laughs> so JC this was fresh sorrel I chopped it and it was in my freezer 
So I chopped it in the food processor when I brought it home from the market. Uh, close up time now, guys. I'm going to be adding the chia seeds. So I want the viewers to see the action. Uh, so when you're multitasking, guys, don't let one dish ruin the other. Our curry sauce is cooking nice and slow. Take a look. Let's try to get it to the, my perfect temperature, 320. All right, so that is there. Now we are going to be adding our chia seeds. Let me turn down my pot. And you want to make sure you have all of what you need because this is going to go fast. So I have a jar. have a nice jar here I have a funnel and now it's time to add our chia seeds so usually the ratio of chia seed to jam when you're thick minute um, using chia seed uh, the ratio that I use is one to one and a half tablespoons of chia seeds and this is what it looks like this is a black one. It has a few white ones in there. So usually I start with two and get it mixed in. And so what is happening, the seeds are going to absorb the liquid and it's going to cause it to be thickened. Just like that. And we add three, shouldn't need any more than three. And we're just gonna let this cook for two minutes and then we're gonna put it into our container. And that's all there is to our chia seed sorrel jam. Now remember I told you earlier, the chia seed is, is not pectin, so it doesn't thicken as tight as a pectin would but it, it works beautifully and it's so much easier um, to work with in terms of pectin needs lots of acid for it to act it needs the right ratio of sugar for it to act as well and um, but the chia seed if you want sugar-free jam this is the best way to get it using chia seed as your thickener so you could make a mango jam uh, any fruit tonight I'm using sorrel please note sorrel is not a fruit um, but it makes a beautiful jam can I show off a good evening sister family I made it the menu looks appealing hey sis welcome okay I feel like they just based on I I might need so I ha I added three tablespoons I'm just gonna add going to level it off to four and we should be fine so let's look at it this is great with pancake this is great as a filling for cakes this you can add this to other fruits when you're making your smoothie you can just snack on this um, with your favorite crackers or toast this is absolutely like tonight. I really plan to put this on a cheesecake, but lo and behold, I reach into my egg drawer and I don't have any eggs. That is unheard of in my house. I don't have any eggs. The kids eat off the eggs and don't even say that the eggs was finished. And then I plan to get some at the store and totally forget. So let me give this a taste. Oh my God, guys. Sorry, you know that sorry is naturally tart, right? That is why it takes so, so much sugar, but it just works. Anything that is sour will work well with sweet. And so this is absolutely delicious. I feel like I need just a little bit more ginger powder. My ginger is not shining through as strong as I want it. I like the ginger to the point of peppery in the sorrel. So I'm adding one more teaspoon of ginger. And mix it in, mix it in. 
So this is a great topper for cake and as my niece Kadira said, Auntie make a sorrel cobbler cake. I definitely will make a very easy sorrel cobbler cake for you guys to see and I'll save some of this to do so. So you see that everything is nice and tight and this is ready. As it cools down, it's going to get even thicker. So now I'm just going to put it in our jar. Let me just grab a towel to hold my pot, turn this off, and I'm just going to go for a ladle and get it into nice tidy flavor. Sue says looks lovely. Thank you, Sue. Rue Mignotti says chia style jam looks yum. Okay, so I put my funnel aside and I'm just going to use my ladle only. Funnel. Nisia is asking, other than chia seeds, what else can be used as a replacement? Pick one. Pectin. Pectin is the original thickener for jams, but chia is the alternative tonight. Chia is, is a, a great thickener and um, unlike pectin, it doesn't rely heavily on sugar for it to work. So for the persons who want less sugars in their diet, this is the way to go. So this is what it looks like. We're just gonna put a cover on it. Um, I thought it would have filled up that big jar. How wrong was I? But that's what it is. We're gonna take a shot of it so that you can see it when it's cooled out. So tomorrow we'll take a picture. So now back to our curry sauce and it's cooking nicely. So we're just gonna let it hang out there and get happy. Now we are going to move on rice. Remember I told you we were making rice? So let's go. Yeah, he says, Chia Sarindam. Siyam. Kadira said, Cheesecake. So I have invited me. Says, other than the Chia seeds. Sorry. So now guys, we are going to make some rice. Some basmati. One tablespoon of oil. And let me grab my spoon and one tablespoon of butter. And I'm going to be making rice. Rice and curry goes well together. Just love the two combo. Who doesn't love rice and curry? It doesn't matter what kind of curry, it works with rice. So for our rice, we're adding the rest of our onion that was left over from our masala sauce. And we're just gonna saute this. Are you with me? Don't forget, don't let me forget the coconut milk. This coconut milk is going to be added to our curry to finish it. Please remind me of it. So right now we are making our rice dish. So, coconut milk for our curry sauce. And right now, are you following guys? Now we are making our rice. And this method that I'm using to make the rice is called the pilaf method, um, P-I-L-A-F. And that is done by toasting the rice. So we usually saute some onions to give it some flavor. And then we are going to, for this rice, I'm adding some cinnamon and coconut 
Oh, and more onion. So this rice has a bag of flavor. Have you ever added coconut to your rice? You should try it. This is freshly shredded coconut. This is cinnamon stick and some onions. And this is rice. So we're just gonna add one cup of basmati rice and just mix everything together like this. And this is the peel-off method. And what I love with the peel-off method, it guarantees what we call a shelly rice all the time. Uh, so always know that you can add any extra flavor you want to add to your rice dish. You can add vegetables, uh, you can add spices. And tonight, this is something I always do with basmati, I always add coconut and cinnamon. I love the two combination in the rice. And see, we're toasting up the rice just to get it nice and toasty. And then, with that said, we add some water. Just enough water to cook the rice. And we add some salt to taste. Never forget to add your salt to taste. And then next time you see this rice, it's going to be cooked. Let's get a cover for it. So there goes our coconut basmati. Just want it to come to a boil. And then we're gonna turn it on low and allow it to just cook nice and low and slow. Jenny Mason, good evening, cuz. Good evening, how are you? So, let me do a little cleaning up. A little bit of cleaning up while I'm at it. All right, what else do we have left to cook up? Our curry sauce is cooking nicely. I'm gonna put this out the way and bring back our sauce to center stage. Here it goes. Pull the cord. Curry sauce is back. On center stage. Remember I told you earlier, we want to cook this sauce until it is okay. Don't come too close guys, it's popping. So we're reducing all the liquid. Just get a little peek, it's popping. All right, I'm gonna give it a taste to see what else I need to add to it. And then our sauce, give it a taste. It's very important that you cook it. It'll cook out that raw turmeric taste. Very, very important. So no rush. Cook it nice and slow and you stir occasionally. That addition of the tamarind. That Venus says remember the coconut milk. Yes, the coconut milk uh, goes in there last. Thank you so much for reminding me. Thank you so yes, my aunt don't do that and coconut that is. Alimon says nice. That looks like something I will try when next time with rice. Can I use stock instead of water? Definitely, definitely. Stock will definitely add a nice flavor. So our rice is cooking away. You want to turn it down because you don't want it to burn. So I'm just turning it down. When you're cooking rice, do not disturb it too much. It does not like to be disturbed. And in a few minutes, we are going to make our roti and dinner will be ready. Oh, vegetable. I was going to be making curry cabbage for the vegetables tonight. Open that fridge drawer and take out that cabbage for me, please. Totally forget to prep that cabbage, guys. So, cabbage is on the menu. So I wonder who our winner is going to be, our final winner. I wonder if it is you that is watching, who is the winner going to be, Ashia? They will find out at the end of the life. I know they will. So guys, I'm prepping away some cabbage. 
going to make some curry cabbage. This pork cabbage has been in my fridge forever. And it's finally going to get cooked. to get cooked. Rice is cooking. So we're going to take this out the way again. My countertop is just too small for all of this. Okay, so for our cabbage is what we're going to do. We're just going to chop up a nice cabbage. Get the container, put it in. Marie, probably that. When I come to Jamaica next year, I really need to find your house. <laughs> I think so, Marie. Okay, so we have a container that we are going to put in <clears throat> our cabbage in. Chop off the core of the cabbage. This part is a little bit tough. We don't eat that part, we get rid of that part. And just kind of rough chop it. that my friend Karen always make and it's so good she's a vegan and she makes curry cabbage and when she makes curry cabbage and you have that curry cabbage oh my god it tastes so good so Karen I'm inspired by you to make curry cabbage tonight let's take out this tough part we'll need that part and I'll probably get it. I have to go around the back and get some turmeric to add some color to this. Yeah. Or maybe smart curry powder or something. Check it out for me. It's in the one that was left here yesterday. Chop it, chop it, chop it in no particular order. You just want to chop it so that it's easy to eat. I mean, I wish I had some. What is your favorite curry that you buy in the store, guys? What's your favorite curry to buy in the store? like coconut and cinnamon it smells so good it's what our rice is looking like look at that so we're just gonna cover it and let it continue to steam on low low and slow it doesn't need any any um any more liquid Back into 
to center stage. I'm going to stop you once and I'm going to try to put that guy to Corey and tell you both on Friday. Nice. Okay guys, so look at this. Remember I told you I was going to cook it until it was dry. So this is it. So now that we're sure that all the spices are cooked out, we're just going to add back just a little water to it. And we're going to add our coconut milk. I'm using a canned coconut milk. I find this brand to be nice and creamy. So that's what I'm using. I'm gonna go grab a spoon, give this a taste, see if I need to re-season with some tamarind or salt. Let's see. So you must always taste your food. Taste it as you go so that you can layer in the correct flavors. Oh God, this is so nice. It has the right amount of pepper to it. So we're just gonna let this finish up. Low and slow. Doesn't need any coconut, more coconut milk. We, it has enough. So now is the time I'm gonna take our rice off and I'm gonna put it on the stove over this side. Then they said cabbage is so it's so expensive now. So, I'll make huh? I guess it's not. Oh okay. Go ahead and she said cabbage is so expensive now. I made this dish when the price coming down. <laughs> oh my god. You know, cabbage is one of them things that when it is cheap, it's cheap. And when it is expensive, it is expensive, and you're so right. I, sometimes I wonder how they how they get to price these things. But um, as much as the vegetables get expensive, if you shop at the market, it's not so bad because it's I paid two. It was one hundred and eighty and two hundred dollars per pound. So if you're really looking for a bag, a bag for your buck, it's not that expensive. It's like the same price of chicken. Uh, it's cheaper than fish it's still pretty much affordable but I get where you're coming from with that because sometimes cabbage can be ten dollars a pound and now it's 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 between two hundred and two hundred and fifty dollars a pound and when they are so expensive they're so tacky looking the more expensive the cabbage gets the weirder and the uglier it becomes I don't know how but it's, it was so difficult for me to find this cabbage in the market because the, the supply is such so short these days. The Fire Republic is checking in. Fire Republic Patricia Brown says, you get me started to use butter packs, sis, and I love it. <laughs> Thank you, sis. So, better pack. So, back to the curry. I asked a question. What is the favorite? What is, what is your favorite curry powder that you buy in the store? And Patricia is saying, um, I introduced her to Better Pack. I love Better Pack. I don't know what they put in it, but you know, for us Jamaicans, curry is a lot about the color, right? Do you agree? Yeah, we like to see that bright yellow color. But this curry that I'm making tonight is not the typical Jamaican curry. This is inspired by Chelsea. Indian cooking, so it's, it's a little bit different. Chelsea says better pack along with Nisa. Lavina says better pack or Indian. Okay, so what is the difference between the two curry powder? In my opinion, the Indian curry powder in Jamaica, as it is called, I feel like they just put some more Indian spices. So once you taste it, right away you're tasting a strong cumin which is an indian spice flavor so i feel like they add cumin and coriander and maybe a few other stuff and that is referred to as the indian curry but we love our better pack it gives you the right color it gives you the right taste and can i tell you something guys curry powder is made from 90 percent turmeric that same yellow ginger that some people call dry turmeric 
is what we used to make curry powder in Jamaica and I don't know what metal pack add to theirs. I don't know what variety of turmeric they use, but it's absolutely amazing. I, I, one thing I know that the better pack curry powder doesn't have a lot of fillers in them. Some curry powders, if you read the label, it tells you that starch is a part of the ingredients. You ever cook curry and it just start thickening up on you? Read the, cur the label. Sometimes they add what I call fillers in the form of starch to it and that doesn't make it taste good at all. So, we are going to now move on to... Are you calling doing that? I buy Jamaican curry in a store in the America Island. It doesn't taste the same and it has more color. <laughs> they need to add some more turmeric. But let me tell you, if you are abroad and you want that bright color that is associated with the curry, just buy some turmeric. Buy a good pack of turmeric and then you can add your spices to it and make your own curry powder so if you have ground turmeric you can add black pepper you can add some cumin you can add some coriander to it you can add some ground pimento and voila you can even add some ginger to it and voila you just made your own curry powder isn't that cool it's not that difficult um, to make but if you can find your favorite brand that works for you that's fine too so checking in on our rice checking in on our rice guys check 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 i'm going to take this all the way and come ashilia let's check in on the rice guys are we ready for the big rice reveal Look at that. Look at that coconut on top. Look at that. This rice is ready. Alright, so we're going to take this off and we're going to start making our fish. So this is done. Isn't that beautiful? And it smells delicious too. So this goes off to the side and we are going to make our tilapia masala just like that and just like that dinner is ready so I think what I'm going to do I'm going to switch my stove around my curry sauce is ready this is what it looks like Gonna remove it so this is gonna be added to the fish so this is done so I'm gonna just hold it while I eat my towel or my roti so this is what we're, what we're gonna cook our roti on so this is what we're gonna do we're gonna just put it over the heat so that it can heat up and put it out the way so let us take up some of these things that we're not using make some space Marie calling you with us okay cool good to know thank you you're welcome okay so time to make our fish so what I'm doing now guys our towel is heating up this is a piece of cast iron that I will be cooking the roti on. I bought this in the hardware, or did I buy it in the hardware? Yeah. I, yeah, I walked in the hardware one day and I saw them selling these cast iron towels and I bought two of them. And this is, you put this over your burner and you let it get hot and you cook your roti on it. So right now, Focus into this pot. We're going to be making our fish. Colette Ellen Walker, my chef. Hey, Colette. So for our fish, again, we're adding a tablespoon of oil and a tablespoon of butter. The fish that we're using is tilapia. Very, 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 very delicate. And 
for those who are just joining, we season our fish at a um, earlier. So these are the tools that we're using. Once you're using a non-stick pot, you always need a plastic or wooden utensil so you doesn't scratch your pot up. Please bear that in mind. So this is what we're going to do. This, these are our tilapia fillets and they were seasoned already. So now they're just gonna go into the pot. And I like to use a nice wide pot to give me some space so that I can turn the fish. And you wanna do this on high because you know how fish is very delicate. So this, my um, pot is at the highest setting right now, my stove. And basically what we're doing, we're allowing the fish to sear, just kind of pass the fat around to make sure that fat is touching all the parts. Then we're going to flip it over and the sauce is going to be added to it. And I have, I had this dish in an Indian restaurant in Olam and they actually served it to me with some okras. And I felt like that was so cool because, you know, I didn't really know at the time that other culture um, put the okra in the fish that we, the way we did. So the fish had all of this Indian spice and then this was, they served it with a beautiful okra relish. It was so good. Tonight, I'm just gonna slice up some okras and just put on top just for texture and of course, for garnish. Uh, my daughter doesn't like okra, so she'll just have to pick it out. So I'm gonna prepare my okras while I wait. Where are the one minute mark on Instagram? Where are they? One minute mark on Instagram. One minute? One hour twenty. Okay, so. Alright, Instagram people, we want to save our lives, so we will come back. So we're going to get off and save it and then start a new live, okay? So see you in a bit. So right now, I'm prepping some GoPros. while I wait on the fish to sear up. So we'll just wait on the Instagram people. So Facebook and YouTube, this is us. So right now, I am going to be cutting some GoPros. And dinner is coming together nicely. I just want to slice these okras. Slice them very, very thin. Welcome back, Instagram people. Slicing up some okras to garnish our fish. amazing vegetables. I think people are scared of the slime, but the slime is actually a thick nut. And let me tell you a fun fact. You know that okra is related to sorrel. If you look at a sorrel plant and an okra plant, you can see the resemblance. And I don't know if you've ever noticed, sorrel also, if you take sorrel and you chop it up, you see that same slimy substance that comes out of an okra into the sorrel. They are related in that way. I love okra. It's a great vegetable and I love to eat it whenever I can. All right, I think we're good with that. So now let's go back to our fish real quick. a lifter. So these are fish fillets, so they will break on you, so you have to pay attention to them. See, uh oh, see what I'm talking about, that one tried to break. 